Hello, 7th graders. Welcome back to Latin. This is uh, your Friday video, so congratulations on making it through another week. This is the second to last full week, which is cool, uh, given that you guys are going on, what, like a four-day weekend um, before we have a half week, and then one, the last full week, and then finals week. Okay, so today we're going to go through three lectiones from this chapter, since we spent this week going over the story. We still haven't gotten to the lectiones. We'll do three today two on Wednesday, then you'll have gone through the five that I will select from for your last quiz, which will be next Friday. We'll dip our toes in uh, chapter 20, and then we'll just start prepping for the final left at, at that point. That last full week will mostly be us kind of going over everything you're responsible for knowing on the final. Um, and you guys tend to do pretty well on those cumulative assessments. All right, let's go through these. So just sit back and relax with a notebook, preferably. Um, yeah, you should have a notebook. You should be going through these. Uh, but I'm not going to do that thing today where I'm like, oh, you should pause it right now and work through it. I'm going to kind of work through these slowly, you know, and linearly in a left to right manner in a way that hopefully gives you enough time to be working through them contemporaneous to how I'm working through them, meaning at the same time, eudex aquo eudicium paratum est labora iam superator. So left to right here, first thing I'm seeing eudex, uh, that means judge, right? It's a newer word. And that must just be uh, our subject, right? Think of that I as a J. Think of the word judicial. Who are people who are judicial? Uh, what was Paris made to be in that story this week? Oh, a judge. Okay, so it looks like our subject is just going to be the judge, right? All right. Okay, I'll keep moving. Aquo. Now, what do I think when I see aquo? A uh, is from this preposition ob. Quo has a preposition over the o. Whenever I see nouns or pronouns with a single vowel at the end that has a macron over it, I tend to think that's ablative. Also, what else am I thinking when I see aquo? Um, hmm, interesting. Okay, looks like we're not having a question here. So quo is not an interrogative pronoun or adjective. So maybe this is the beginning of a relative clause. Spoiler, guys, the lectiones that we're going to be looking at, they like, they go crazy with the relative clauses. I don't know why this chapter is about the uh, interrogative pronoun and adjective version of qui qui quad, but it's good to continue to brush up on relative clauses since they can be weird. So I just underlined the whole thing. Let's make sure we actually understand that. I knew that I was maybe entering one or like, you know, I guess like definitely entering one when I saw quo. Usually they're starting with the quick quad quad, but quo needs its preposition buddy. That is the clearly the object of. So we're going to include a. And then I go until a verb. And this is kind of new for us, but hopefully you recognize paratum est as that verb. That is a perfect passive verb. Paratum is agreeing with something neuter. Maybe judge is neuter, and it's being verbed. I'm not, I don't know yet. Um, but hopefully you can tell that is a verb. It's a newfangled perfect passive verb, so there's two pieces of it, paratum and est. But that is what our new perfect passive verbs look like. So they can, you know, the verb of a relative... Clause can definitely be a perfect passive. I see labora after that. And labor, laboris, that's their declension. So that E there, is that just another ablative? A different kind of ablative? So a different shade of green? Yeah, maybe. Iam is just like now, conjunction, right? And superator uh, is a passive verb. So we have a passive verb in our relative clause and a passive verb in the main clause. So we have a perfect passive third person singular with paratum est, and superator is third singular passive present tense. I don't know why I didn't write present. But yeah, that's just a good old like present tense passive ending from chapter 18. Okay, so let's start this off. We, we already kind of figured out our subject is the judge. And then the first thing I, I think when I see aquo is uh, there, there, there's some confusion maybe about ob. Remember, this just a ah is short for ob. Um, let's see, one second. Okay, check out this note towards the bottom of the screen, which I just added, but for you guys, it probably was there the whole time. Uh, but So, ah and ob ah is this preposition we got, like, several chapters back. Previously, it meant from. So, from, previously. Uh, so, it was part of this club with X and day uh, in terms of Latin prepositions that could mean from. We, we have a whole gang of them. But when they when it, ah or ob ah shows up in a sentence with a passive verb, it's going to be by. It's going to be by. Because often it'll tell us, like, by whom something is done, something is verbed, right? Since a subject is being acted upon by a passive verb, 
the ablative plus ob is usually the ablative of agent that is telling us like who is doing something. So that's a long-winded way of just saying when you see ah next to something like quo, you can almost just immediately kind of fill it in as like by whom. By whom? Eudicium, we're not sure what that, that could have been a subject or a direct object. Uh, another thing to keep in mind though that would clear that up is we do not have direct objects in sentences with passive verbs. Okay, we just virtually do not. So if something has that neuter ending or that third declension ending that could be a subject or a direct object, but your verb is passive, that thing's just a subject. So it's by whom, it's going to be something like by whom a subject has been verbed, right? Because paratum s is perfect passive, so has been or was verbed, and it, it's, it's going to be a subject. So is the eudicium just the subject? So would that be the judge by whom a judgment has been prepared? A subject has been verbed, right? A judgment has been prepared. So, okay, we, we have the subject of our main clause, and then we have a relative clause that is expanding on it. The judge is the antecedent of a relative clause, quo, to put it in chapter 18 terms. All right, so let's keep moving and finish off the main clause. The judge by whom a judgment has been prepared. Labora iam superator. Hmm, what happens to this judge? It's, it's a passive verb, so something is happening to him. So the judge maybe is overcome. Uh, is overcome now by work. Okay, so the main clause has a passive verb going on with its own little ablative of means. So Labora is an ablative of means since it's not a person. He's verbed by this ablative of means. Whereas in the relative clause, uh, he, he is verbed, or I'm sorry, judgment is verbed by by whom? By the judge. So the aquo is an ablative of agent. So yeah, these are the two ablatives that love to hang out when we have passive verbs around. When you get a passive verb in the mix, you're going to be getting an ablative of agent or an ablative of means buzzing around your sentence. They tend to congregate around passive verbs. It's just how it works. So the main clause was just the judge is overcome now by work, where the main clause is kind of interrupting it, and it kind of needs to interrupt it. I don't think in the translation you could really, uh, uh, you know, uh, change its, uh, like, where it's appearing in the sentence. Atsenum cuius familia serwata erat num quanguidi. I like this sentence just fine grammatically, but in terms of like the, the kind of story it's telling, I, I don't really, I couldn't make heads or tails of this one. But anyway, ot, ot, it's just like otque, okay? It, it just means like and. It's just another and. Um, It's a kind of and that you can start a sentence off with apparently. Sinem. I see sinem. And what case are you guys thinking as soon as you see sinem? Is that from like that sinex, uh, sinus adjective slash noun? It could mean old or old man. Hmm, is it direct object? Is it accusative? So it is accusative. I don't know if it's a direct object yet. It could be like an ob uh, object of an accusative taking preposition. But I don't see an accusative preposition around like prop there or post or anything. So I'm just going to say like I, maybe that's my direct object eventually. I see cuius, and that's some kind of genitive. All right, isn't that the genitive of qui quad quad? I see familia. And I think, oh, that's just like a subject. That doesn't have any macron over the A. That's just, that's, that's a nominative singular. And then I see servata erat. I'm like, okay, perfect passive. That's what this chapter is about. Partly, we have a perfect passive there. Servata has the same ending as familia. So it can be agreeing with familia. So it's like the, the familia had been servata or whatever. We'll, we'll get into that. And then I see numquam weedy. So numquam weedy. What is weedy? There's something weird about that verb. Is that, hmm... Wideo wideiri. Is that just first singular perfect? So like I have verbed? Okay, okay. Now I'm starting to get a picture of this sentence. Starting off with and, but what's what's going on with the... So if the subject is I, that's what we de reveals, that it's just like I have seen, or I've never seen, numquam. Then that's our subject. Uh, we're going to see a direct object. And then what's all that other grammar going on in the middle? Oh, okay. That's a relative clause. So I failed to immediately do what I did with the last sentence where I immediately recognized that we had a relative clause starting up with, with aquo. It took me a second. I mean, I, when I saw cuius, I should have thought that immediately. But it wasn't until I, I kind of got to, like, to the end of the main clause and, and when I went back and, and thought, okay, this is a relative clause that must be expanding on the synonym, on the old man that I've never seen, I guess. Is that what's going on? Okay, so that's going to be slightly separate. So and I have never seen an old man. That's just the first two words and the last word, and the last two words, right? That is the main clause. In, in English terms, the word order is crazy. It'd be something like, but the old man, blah, 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 uh, I've never seen. 
So that's kind of what it is, but I'll, I'll take it this way. And I have never seen an old man or the old man. And then starting with cuius, we have, we're going into a relative clause. So whose, I'm just going to translate cuius as whose, because um, it's genitive, and that's how we translate cuius. Uh, or uh, uh, the, uh, what is it, quorum? Yeah. Um, genitive plural is quorum or quorum. Whose family, whose subject, whose subject... Servata erat. What is servata erat? For one thing, it is not perfect passive. It's actually pluperfect passive because of erat. So it's had, had been saved or cons uh, conserved. Um, and that's why, yeah. So now, I mean, that's basically the sentence. But yeah, like, what? Is, I don't know what this is trying to communicate. I, and I've never seen an old man whose family had been saved. Uh, what, I don't. Usually the sentences have some kind of internal logic. To like the the, the kind of idea they're expressing, I don't know what this, I like, I don't know what the story is here, but I don't know. Maybe maybe you guys should write a short story uh, that would provide a context for for understanding what that sentence is getting at. All right, last one for today, and then we'll be done with Latin for the week, and you can enjoy your four day weekend. Okay, aquiwe qui ad graecia misos erat pax et libertas laudatae sunt. Uh, Akiwe. Hmm, okay, I'm thinking just immediately. I haven't gone through those last two. It's ablative, right? That Oz from Ob. Uh, Ob takes an ablative, usually an ablative of agent. A citizen could be an ablative of agent. All right, interesting. And I see Qui, and I'm like, okay, all right. Like, we're doing another relative clause. Wow. Uh, this is not the relative clause chapter, but we are just doing going all in on relative clauses, even though we have interrogative and uh, interrogative pronouns and adjectives to, to learn this chapter. We'll get to those next week, apparently, which is maybe good. Quia Graecium Mises Errat. How did I know to end off the relative clause at Mises Errat if I have no commas? Well, Mises Errat, once again, it's another pluperfect passive, just like the pluperfect passive we saw last time. Pluperfect because of Errat. Uh, but yeah, it, it's one of the perfect passives that happens to be pluperfect. Um, okay, so we start with the relative clause, end with a verb there, and then I actually get back into my main clause, which is very simple, actually. Pox at, at libertas. Hmm, pox at libertas. Is that just a subject? I think that's just a straight-up subject. Peace and liberty. Laudate sunt. Hmm, okay. Laudate sunt is just another, uh... Perfect passive. This time it's actually perfect passive, not blue perfect. And then, as I just highlighted, ad Graecium there. That's some kind of accusative object, like to Greece, right? To Greece. Something is going to verb to Greece, I guess, or get verbed to Greece. All right. And, and, and then, yeah, there's Laudate soon. Perfect passive. So, this might seem like a weird place to start, but the thing I identified as the nominative subjects are peace and liberty. Right? They're, they're buried in the middle of the sentence there, but that's the actual like start of our main clause. Uh, I don't think I could start with Akiwe, like by the citizen. Maybe, maybe. That would be something I would like do editorially after I was done kind of figuring everything out. Peace and liberty. Laudatai sunt? That's pretty easy. Laudo laudare to praise. So peace and liberty have been praised. That's all that is. Or, or were praised. Were praised is fine too. Um, who were they praised by? Oh, by the citizen. There we go. We know what to do with our citizen. So peace and liberty have been praised by the ablative of agent. It is an ablative agent by the citizen. And then we're going to learn more about that citizen in the relative clause. So now let's actually do the middle part. By the citizen who had been sent. Now let's make sure we actually understand how to do that. Who had been sent. Oh, I wrote has in the thing. One second. So had, because it's misus erat, pluperfect again. But yeah, maybe you don't even know misus yet as being related to mitomitra. It does look a bit different. Mitomitra is to send. Misi is the perfect stem. And then misos is the participle that we use here. Uh, and we we left it uh, masculine singular, because I guess citizen can be. And then erat is telling us third person singular plu. It does agree with a citizen, or a, the who, rather. Um, yeah. Um, who has been sent to Greece. To Greece, right? That's our accusative object. All right. Hopefully this is maybe actually a more successful way to go through these than the whole, like, pause the video thing. I mean, I might still do that, like, one or two more times, but... But, yep, okay. Um, have a good long weekend. I will speak to you all on Wednesday to prep for our very last Latin quiz of the year. And look at our very last grammar of the year, which is just fourth declension. All right, voilà.